Here we are again, back with you again. Here we are again, back. You remember Kukla, Fran, and Ollie? There was always something slightly scary about Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. It's okay because they're not on TV anymore and they can't get out of the TV and get you. We're back with most of the crew. And amazingly, Hightow has returned. And hopefully will stay with us uh, for the continuum of time. Um, I am not wearing a mask. I am 10 feet away or six feet away from the closest person. And my crew is fully masked and everybody uh, is healthy, well, and happy, except for Leonard. Now I'm gonna tell you guys something happened, okay? I was sitting by a pool in the nighttime. Leonard was walking around and he fell in and it made two sounds, a front end and a back end. But when I got, I could see he was swimming fine. I picked him up and wrapped him in a towel. I didn't push him. We're going to be making a summery swordfish dinner. Swordfish, you go, oh, swordfish is always so dry. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm gonna tell you the big secret, it's real easy. And it's sort of like serving a fish version of steak. It has a very steaky quality. People who don't like fish, usually like swordfish. So we're going to make swordfish. We're going to make um, a beautiful cucumber and feta salad, which is extremely simple and a real crowd pleaser. And then we're going to make a fruit salad with a special secret that you won't want to forget that's so incredibly easy. And we're also going to make a cocktail or possibly two cocktails that sort of fit in with that end of summer feeling. I personally hate the summer. And every day that summer gets more and more back, it means Christmas is coming closer. Christmas 2020, I think we deserve a pretty good dinner. <laughs> We're gonna make something called creme anglaise, which means English cream. In England, very commonly, as Kelly Coles Evans can attest, they serve a custard with dinner. It's like a liquidy, thick cream sauce creme anglaise, right? Custard and rhubarb, custard and chocolate pudding. And what it really is, is an uncooked ice cream base, frankly, um, that you put in the fridge and it thickens and thickens and thickens after you've thickened it uh, on the stove. And then it pours like a thick gravy of creamy sweetness. You can make this at least a day in advance. Honestly, I made it for David recently, and when I came back from Sunday on Thursday, he was, it was still there and we ate it for dessert and it was fine. So I think it'll last as long as the cream will last in your fridge. So I'm taking approximately two cups of cream. I'm gonna heat this cream sort of aggressively. I don't have all day, if you know what I'm saying. And into that, I'm gonna put three quarters of a cup of sugar. This is regular sugar. Caster sugar is easier because it melts quicker. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. We're basically making an ice cream base. So if you want to, for some reason, switch videos, you can watch the ice cream base. <laughs> and we're gonna let the, the sugar melt in there. I'm just gonna stir this to help the sugar melt. So here's a little tip. Always put the handle on the handle so that it doesn't get the heat from the ring. Put the handle next to the handle. Huh? Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of vanilla paste, our old favorite. Please buy the big bottle, you'll save so much money. I'm gonna put in what Jamie Oliver refers to as a glug. You wanna use something with the seeds. If you have a vanilla bean, you can scrape the seeds in too. But I'm gonna put a fairly large amount in here because we wanna be able to have a strong vanilla flavor. David went to Tahiti and he brought back uh, Tahitian vanilla powder, beans, and paste. It's so floral. The difference is amazing. Like it's uh, almost like frangipan, like it's so white flour smelling. It's melted and it's quite hot. Now what I do, I've made a lot of ice creams and a lot of creme anglaise. What I do is I look to see if smoke is rising. I don't know if Hightower can see that. Do you see the steam? That means it's ready to temper the eggs. These are six egg yolks. I'm gonna teach them or temper them. I'm gonna put a little bit in and stir it like crazy. So I'm gonna go like this. 
Otherwise, you're gonna get scrambled eggs. If I dumped this all in, room temperature eggs into the warm mixture, they would immediately scramble, right? And then you can dump it in. Now you wanna keep stirring, keep stirring, and don't be afraid for it to get hot because you're gonna strain it. So don't worry if you have a little bit of scrambled eggs in the bottom. It's gonna start to thicken up a little bit. Here's a question for you. How do I get an MBE? I'll take an MBE, it doesn't have to be an OBE. I wanna be a member of the British Empire. I thought one way I could do it is to buy a grade two listed property in England and restore it, then maybe I'd get an MBE, right? Okay. But then all my friends said that was really dumb. <laughs> but it has to be in service to the British Empire. What am I doing in service to the British Empire? Not very much. Except I'm making creme anglaise. Now you want this to get a little bit thicker than an ice cream base. Don't forget that in here, it's thinner than it will be after you chill it. And you can serve it at room temperature if you'd like, or um, you could serve it hot. I, I prefer it room temperature. Cold is nice with what we're serving tonight. Um, this is getting really thick. I don't know if you can see that, Hito. All right, I'm happy with this. So I'm going to get a strainer and a small jug. Pouring through, pouring through the sieve. So I have a little bit of scrambled eggs in here. It's not the end of the world because I have a strainer. A magic strainer. Ooh, I made a perfect amount. All right, there's creme anglaise. Look at that. What we're going to do is wait for this to come to room temperature. Then I'm going to put a piece of saran wrap on the surface of the creme anglaise so that it doesn't form a skin. Although some people's favorite part of custard is the skin. But if you did that now, you would melt the plastic and you don't want all those weird estrogens that are in the plastic. So you wait until it comes to room temperature, cover it on the surface with plastic wrap and refrigerate until use. And you can take it out and let it come to room temperature. Creme en glaise. It's good, I says. Swordfish, like any creature, gave its life for you without its own intention. So the worst thing you could do is massacre it in the kitchen when you cook it. You already massacred it. The least thing you can do is show it respect when you cook it. Swordfish, used to be overfished. It's now the opposite of overfished. Uh, it does have mercury in it, just like all fish. You're not eating swordfish every day, so it's not gonna do anything bad to you. Things to look for when you buy swordfish, as with any fish at all, no smell. What you also want to look for is this bloodline, which is actually okay to eat, unlike other fish, should be pink or dark red, like this. It should not be brown, okay? So you see how that's distinctly pink? Distinctly pink, distinctly pink. If it's brown, it means the fish was cut a long time ago and the blood oxidized. So don't buy that. And of course you've tipped your so he wouldn't do that to you. It's expensive. It's not as expensive as it was when I was a kid. You don't eat the, the, um, the skin, but you'll see when it's cooked, it's very easy for them to, to pull the skin or to just eat around the skin. It's very easy. I recently bought swordfish for five people and I did the ultimate mistake, which is that I didn't look at the fish until about two hours before dinner. What they had done was cut four, I, sorry, I bought four completely disparate thicknesses. One was an inch and a half, one was an inch, one was a little under an inch, and one was this thick. So as a cook, that's a major, major problem. But uh, these are from Citarella, and they are approximately an inch. This one's a little thinner, but not much thinner. The first thing you're gonna do is marinate these, okay? So you're just gonna put them in a non-reactive container like this. This is a little small, but it's our tradition. <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna put olive oil on them. Salt and pepper, I'm gonna salt and pepper both sides, liberally. And don't be afraid to, uh, to try this, okay? Um, the other reason is because you can cook it inside and outside on the grill. And like other fish, it's really easy to flip it on the grill. I'm gonna put a couple pieces of tarragon underneath. Tarragon goes very nicely with fish. I'm gonna put a couple pieces on top. I'm gonna put some onions. I mean, it looks all good already, right? 
And then I'm gonna squirt some lemon, but not too much, because if you use too much lemon and you marinate it too long, you're gonna have uh, ceviche. Like, mm, just a little bit, okay? Now, I'm gonna also use a teeny bit of ponzu, essentially like a lemon soy sauce, but it's light, it's really light, not too much. The other thing I used um, last weekend was lemongrass from the garden. You take this huge thing, and when you actually cut it down, it's like this big, the part that you use, you know? It's the inside of the inside of the inside of the bulb. You wanna marinate it for an hour if you can, or two hours in the fridge, but don't forget, you have to take it out of the fridge before you cook it and let it come to room temperature, or what will happen? The outside will sear before the inside can heat. Same thing with any meat. You take a steak out, ice cold, sear it, cook it in other words, try to cook it. You can sear it beautifully, get a beautiful crust on both sides. But because the inside is so cold, it didn't cook. So you want it to come to room temperature and then your cooking times will be correct. Always remember that, it's an important point. So this is going to just sort of marinate in its own thing. I'm gonna bring some butter to room temperature sort of in the afternoon, because I'm gonna use that in the sauce. And basically, that's it. You're just gonna leave this for a couple hours. Do you guys ever see that movie, Two Women with Sophia Loren? In the movie, they, they buy a bag of cherries, a paper bag, and they kind of fold the top of the bag down. And they're sitting in a field, her and her daughter eating these cherries. I'll never forget that scene. For some reason, it was so like... So whenever I get a paper bag, I always roll down the top, like in Two Women. Anyways, we're gonna make fruit salad. Now I'm gonna warn you, it's labor intensive. So if you're gonna make this, make it way before your dinner. It can survive in the fridge. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pit these cherries, which I obviously should have done before, but I didn't. So feel it ran well, right? How about John Paul Belmundo? You know who looks like him? Paul. Who's your favorite old time movie star? Uh, mine is Vivian Lee. I'm gonna stop cherries after this because I didn't realize it would be so time consuming. Basically we're just cutting up fruit. And then I'm gonna tell you this amazing secret. This is a nectarine. It yields to gentle pressure, just like me. Um, we're just gonna cut around it like this, spin it. it looks okay, but we're gonna taste it. Mm. Slice and dice the fruit. Think about eating fruit salad. Those are rather rustic pieces. <laughs> so you wanna make them not too big, not too small. Now if I was really fancy, I would do like a much smaller cut, but we're not doing that. <laughs> How about some plums? Should we put some plums in? Plum. Oh, look at that. Those are a teeny bit sour, which is good. And then in this bowl, I just have blackberries and sliced up uh, strawberries. And you can put a teeny little bit of caster sugar on those or your bowl. Those are beautiful. I wanna put another one of those in. I'm dumping in blackberries and cut up strawberries. I'm gonna put a little squirt of lemon. I'm gonna put a teeny bit of sugar, not a lot, okay? They don't need to know about this. That's it. Should we put some cantaloupe in? Oh, this is nice. Get the seeds out. Use a melon baller. Put the melon baller in, press firmly and twist. You are gonna get one side that's slightly flatter than the others. But the, the point is pressing. Fruit salad, labor of love. Whenever I see somebody serving a fruit salad, I know they went to a lot of trouble. Okay, mix it up. Got a nice mixture of everybody. How beautiful is that for summer, right? There's a store in Woodstock, New York called the Sunfrost. And at the Sunfrost worked for love of food, a really famous rock star called Dr. No from the Bad Brains. The fruit salad was absolutely amazing. And it had oranges in it and stuff like normally I wouldn't like that. And I said, Doc, what the hell is in this that makes it so great? 
orange juice. It's the secret to great fruit salad. You can put this on right before you serve it or a couple hours before. It'll soak in and it'll, it's a game changer. So this is about as much as you want to pour on. It's almost as if you had oranges in there and they made juice. You can wash and tear up some mint. Okay, I'm cleaning the edges. Nobody wants to see a dirty bowl. Put some saran wrap on this and put this in the fridge. So I was thinking, what would go nicely with a beautiful late summer swordfish supper? And I thought, what about cucumber feta salad? I've never made it. I can't imagine it's that difficult and we're gonna find out together. I know what it looks like and I know what I want it to taste like. So we're going to make cucumber feta salad. Served cold, crispy, and yummy. I'm using an English, maybe it'll get me the MBE. It's English. I'm going to uh, peel stripes. So when I cut the half moons, they're cute. Right, is that a cute idea? That's super cute. So I'm, do I, I'm doing, I'm winging this. So then I'm gonna go over a little bit, cut off the ends. Also the seeds are much smaller and much more edible in an English cucumber. I don't really have to scoop these out, but I'm gonna just do a small scoop, just for shape. And when, what's the scariest movie you've ever seen in your whole life? That's a good one for you guys out there too. What's the scariest movie you've ever seen? A lot of people say The Exorcist. Pet Cemetery. I was. Uh... Pet Cemetery. Good one. Okay, now I'm just gonna cut this in toothsome width, like that. I was really scared by Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it was about people. Like I cannot watch the movie with Liv Tyler and the the visitors. The preview makes my eyes water, where the people break into the house for no reason. I have to turn off Dateline sometimes. What about the deliverance? Deliverance is amazing. There's two things in deliverance that honestly have affected my directing my entire life. When the scene where they shoot the hillbilly, I'm gonna use the word hillbilly, the scene where they shoot the hillbilly with the arrow, remember, uh, what's his name? The famous sex symbol guy, playgirl. Burt Reynolds, that's right. When Burt Reynolds shoots the hillbilly with the scene with Ned Beatty, that's so amazing. And when the hillbilly dies, he goes like this. And then he falls over the tree. I, I think that's so genius. I've used that in like six plays. Somebody just going like pointing at something that you can't see. It's so great. And also when they're back in the town and uh, they're eating the dinner and John Voight bursts into tears. Brilliant! <laughs> if you haven't seen Deliverance, you're like, what the hell is this show about? <laughs> Tony Stugard. This would be, and the swordfish actually, it would be very nice on the boat, I think. Here we have beautiful cut cucumbers, bright and sweet. I have here some feta cheese. I'm gonna just break off a small piece. It's very strong feta. I'm just gonna check this. It's quite strong. So I'm just gonna crumble it sort of like this. And I'm gonna sort of crumble those into a container like this. This is plenty of feta for that amount. And I'm thinking, what do I want this to taste like? Trust your instinct, you're a dinner partier. You can do it. It's a little creamy, I don't want it to be that creamy. It should be less creamy. Hmm, I'm gonna use some lemon juice. A Little bit of lemon juice. A little bit of olive oil. I'm looking at that, engaging the olive oil. I'm gonna use a little bit of rice vinegar. A little bit of rice vinegar. A little bit of pepper. I'm not gonna use a lot of salt because there's salt in the feta. And I'm gonna chop up this mint and throw it in. Wash it and dry it. Fold it like this. Hold it. This is called a chiffonade. It's little tiny ribbons. And turn it and chiffonade it again. I think on the first episode, I cut my finger off doing the chiffonade. Was that the first episode, Nick? It was your chopping parsley. I'm just gonna stir this up, but I'm trying not to crush the feta. Fantastic. I'm gonna put this on here. And this should be chilled up real nice. You know, like chill it up. 
And right before you serve it, you can hit it with another squirt of lemon or, or something or pepper on there, which I'm going to do right now. So I think it needs a little more black dots. Look at that. Clean your bowl. Don't ever serve it like that. Don't send something that looks nasty. And remember, don't ever let them know if something was hard to make. That's just divine. So I'm going to cover this with saran wrap and put it in the fridge until basically the swordfish is done and I'll whip it out and uh, serve it. I would just chill this. Don't serve this at room temperature. It should be nice and crisp. Cucumber salad. It's better than being hit with a mallet. Let's make some cocktails. Let's make a cocktail called a Greyhound. You know, it's really just a screwdriver with grapefruit juice, but it's a delightful summer cocktail. And if you add a little drop of Aperol or Amaro to it, you can make it a little bitter like Campari. Here's my completely gorgeous cocktail shaker, which I forgot I owned. Uh, it's one to four, so basically you do this. Tito's. Made in America. So one, I'm gonna count. One, one thousand. You can make your own grapefruit juice, it might even be better than, I mean, actually, it would definitely be better. One, two, three, four. Okay, shake. You should shake it until your hands get too cold. Too cold to shake it anymore. I would serve this in a Nick and Nora, or you could serve it in a martini glass. So with this drink, we'd like to wish a happy birthday, 21st birthday, to Natalie Anders. Thank you for your awesome shout out. Greyhound, doesn't that just look like summer? It looks like sherbet in a glass. Shall we try it? Yes. Well, it's so good. So after we made this and people tried it and we talked about it for a little bit, I, I went and got some Campari and I put Campari in it just to like try it with Campari. But before I mixed it with a little swizzle thing, it did a float, which is what that's called, where the Campari sank and the grapefruit stayed on top. And it's super delightful. That's a significantly good drink. I'm now going to make up a cocktail, sort of. I'm sort of going to make it up. Hold on. This is Pinot de, Pino de Charente, which is not Pinot like Pinot Noir. It's a different word, which is kind of like Lille. It's an aperitif uh, made of wine that's kind of fabulous. So I'm just going to make something up with Pinot de Charente, uh, sweet vermouth, and a little bit of vodka. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Couple drops of Amaro, which is kind of like a stronger version of Pinot de Charente. Shake it, shake it, baby. I don't know how bartenders do it. Let's see what we made. It's an unfortunate color. <laughs> ah, cut that. Rachel Rowling, does it taste good? Tastes delicious. I don't know, I feel like if it tastes good, so yeah, let's just get it. Let's do another Campari float. It's called Leonard at Sunset. Oh, it has a beautiful flavor. So that's Leonard at Sunset with a Campari float. A lot of this experimentation and stuff with cocktails and playing around, getting the shaker out and everything, comes from the incomparable David Leibovitz, who I adore, who does the best ice cream book on the planet, as well as his incredible uh, My Paris Kitchen cookbook, which is just, and I, he's a, a go-to guy, but he recently put out this Drinking in French, which has the most stunning photographs in it. Hold on, let me find one for you. Like it has beautiful, beautiful photographs of drinks involving a lot of difficult to find, like Rin Kin Kin, Rin Kin Kin, or Rin Kin Kin. Who's ever heard of Rin Kin Kin? It's a drink. But he's the one who inspires me to be like, oh, I know those flavors go together. Can I make my own cocktail for an evening? Just remember when you make cocktails that you have to have somebody doing the cocktails, you can't do the cocktails because you're cooking. 
But try a cocktail, a signature cocktail. People love that kind of stuff. They just have to have one, just one little one, then they can move on to their regular drink. Cocktails, why not? Thank you, David Leibovitz. We really appreciate you. You're gonna cook your swordfish. I'm gonna cook it inside. I've been doing it on the grill. It's the same timing. Interesting fact, I've never done it inside, but we'll see, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna light this, Conrad. Wait until this is pretty hot, and then it's hot pan. Not olive oil. Not olive oil. Right. So you want to use uh, oil with a high smoke point, like grapeseed oil, um, because your olive oil will burn. Will burn. Put a little bit in the bottom of this pan. I'm going to use a little bit of grape oil, a grapeseed oil. Okay. Remember, you want the oil to sheet. See how it's still dripping, and you want this to be pretty. Hot, then you can turn it down if you need to. But starting with, it's not a good way to cook. Remember what saute means. Saute means jump, literally. So when you put it in, you want it to jump, saute. I can feel that's pretty hot. I'm gonna put in a little piece of this. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna put the uh, two pieces of swordfish down. Here's a hint for the wise. Presentation side down, okay? The side that you're gonna serve to your guests is the first side. That's the side that will be up for the guests. It has the better sear. So I'm gonna pick this up. I'm gonna sort of shake off a little bit of the onions and I'm gonna lay this down. And I'm gonna do this. Four minutes. One side, three the other. That's it. Don't touch it, don't try to move it, don't panic. If it's stuck, it's okay, all right? It's gonna release. People mess up fish because they, they get scared and they start pushing at it. My niece and I are in a meditation challenge. I know it's not competitive or anything, <clears throat> but I am beating her. <laughs> so yeah, that's the secret. Four and three, on the grill, same thing. On the grill, you want to do two, shift it this way so it has the classic lines, or just leave it. This is exciting stuff. Don't be afraid to cook swordfish. Don't be afraid, it's delish. You can see how cooked it is. It's cooked halfway. Three, two, one. Dun, 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 dun. Flip. Oh yeah, reset, one, two, three, go. Unlike steak, you can't really tell by touching this because it's pretty firm. Just trust these timings. Wine, 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 wine. Wine is a good, good time. Wine, 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 wine. Now remember, just like steak, this will continue cooking when you remove it. And then trust your instinct. Listen, presentation side down, the other side looks better, serve it that way. You have to be able to change your race plan. If you, have a, if you go into something and you're like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it this way, and it doesn't work out, something goes wrong, and you're so rigid that you can't change your plan, you're not gonna win. Um, here we go. Very gently tent that so it doesn't get cold. A little bit of lemon. So I'm gonna deglaze the pan with a little bit of vermouth. It's gonna go crazy. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. Right? Very traditional sauce making. And then I'm gonna add these onions and the tarragon. Simmer that for a few seconds on medium. And then if I was really wanting to impress, I would strain this, but we're just gonna use a spoon. <laughs> Cook these onions. Always taste it. Pretty good. <laughs> you wanna make your sauce the essence of the thing. So I'm making a swordfish sauce made of swordfish for swordfish, about swordfish, with swordfish. Off the heat. Frankly, I would just 
use the pieces. They're so beautiful. Let's use the pieces, shall we? Okay, this is continued to cook, don't forget. Look at that. Serve this with a little corn, boiled corn. Of course you don't boil it because you're a dinner partier and you know how to make corn. Baked potato or something, a crisp Chablis. You're gonna be married by the end of the night. Little squeeze of lemon right at the end. Swordfish, I'm telling you. If the boy is there or the girl is there, it's gonna be a good night for you if you serve this. Today we made a beautiful pan sauteed swordfish, marinated. We made a feta and cucumber salad with mint, delicious. We made a beautiful fruit salad soaked in our secret ingredient, orange juice, and served it with a creme anglaise and English cream. We had some cocktails, a delightful greyhound, and some other cocktails that we might not repeat. It's such a perfect day now that I spent it with you. It was absolutely fantastic to have Hightow and Nicholas back. It was so great. And thank you so much to the fans for sticking with us through me trying to film the pasta stuff and then the girls night thing which was infinitely better than me and just staying with us and encouraging us and writing comments and questions and requesting things and you don't know what it means. It means the world to us at dinner party tonight, the world. And today we made a sort of lovely ending of summer meal. Uh, easy, fun, you can do it for a lot of people or two people. And just remember, the quicker summer ends, the sooner it's Christmas. You fell in. I was what? Well, stop telling Aunt Reggie that I pushed you. But I feel like you did push me. I didn't push you. All right, you didn't push me. Ma? What? I love you. I love you too.